Okay. Hello, my name is David Torres. I'm here with my uh, partners, uh, Jennifer Alvarez and Fernando Mendez. And our faculty mentor is Dr. Ho Song So. We are a part of the Department of Kinesiology here at uh, CSUSB. And, um, and today we are going to present a research critique on the article, Enjoyment of Physical Activity, not MVPA, uh, during physical education, which predicts future MVPA participation and uh, sport self-concept. So this article addresses a general understanding of what physical education is. So there are two main arguments that arise when declaring what the primary focus of PE should be. The two standpoints um, that are presented are should the primary focus of PE be to ensure participants exert a specific level of energy during class or should it be to develop their confidence and motivation for meaningful physical activity participation outside of the PE classroom. So this article investigates the difference between the term exercise and physical activity. It goes on to define physical activity as um, any body movement produced by skeletal muscles that increase energy expenditure above resting levels. And on the other hand, the term exercise is defined as a subcategory of physical activity with uh, the components of planning, structure, repetitiveness, and proposing, striving toward the objective of physical fitness. So despite their differences, they are both generally measured to generate improvements in physical fitness. And uh, research testing the effects of moderate to vigorous physical activity has um, manifested profound health improvements from participation. So the overall purpose of this research study is to investigate whether the approach of construct constructing PE is to prioritize time of MVPA is durable for ensuring students cultivate high levels of MVPA in the future and to and to evaluate which characteristics of physical activity experience determine forthcoming uh, MVPA. So this study applies a structural equation modeling to analyze the correlation between the enjoyment of PA and MVPA in a PE class in grade five and participation in PA a year later in grade six. So this will lead us into our methods, which Jennifer will present. For our methods, families were chosen at child's birth in the year 1991 in the following cities. Little Rock in the state of Arkansas, Irvine in the state of California, Lawrence in the state of Kansas, Boston in the state of Massachusetts, Philadelphia in the state of Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh in the state of Pennsylvania, Charlottesville in the state of Virginia, Morgantown in the state of North Carolina, Seattle in the state of Washington, and Madison in the state of Wisconsin. When the child aged one month, those with healthy babies were enrolled 
and those with non-healthy babies were unfortunately unenrolled and could not participate in the study. There was a total of 1,364 families. The study was based on parent reports, self-observations, and device-assessed measures. The structural equation model, otherwise known as SEM, was used to find the correlation of all variables. The hypothetical model was used to find the expected relationships. Overall, SPSS AMOS was used to calculate all results. For the independent and dependent variables, on the independent variables, all were measured in grade five, which included enjoyment of physical activity, minutes of MVPA, otherwise known as moderate to vigorous physical activity and PE, and MVPA during weekdays. For the dependent variables, for grade five, it included BMI, otherwise known as body mass index, sex, limited physical functioning. For grade six, it included sport, self-concept, enjoyment of physical activity, MVPA all days, and BMI. For our results, the chi-square score for the model was 7.89 with four degrees of freedom. The p-value for the difference between the default and independent model was 0 0.096. And the authors of the study did have three different hypotheses, which included for hypothesis one was that there would be direct effects of independent variables on dependent variables. For their second hypothesis, it stated that there would be indirect effects of independent variables on dependent variables through the mediator variable. For their third hypothesis, they said that there would be residual variance, covariance associations between specific dependent variables. For the result of those hypotheses, for the first hypothesis, MVPA minutes during PE per week in grade five were not significantly associated with any grade six outcomes. For the second hypothesis, weekday MVPA in grade five was significantly associated with attaining MVPA all days in grade six, but not with any other outcome, PE, MVPA, had also no association with weekday MVPA in grade five. For their third hypothesis, the residual variance of grade six sport self-concept significantly correlated with the residual variance of both grade six enjoys physical activity and MVPA all days. Overall, children who enjoyed physical activity in grade five were significantly more likely to have higher sport self-concept, attain more minutes of MVPA all days, and enjoy physical activity in grade six. For our next slide, I have a picture which shows table two in which it provides calculated counts, mean, standard deviation, and ranges for all variables. As you can see here, it shows table two and it shows you all the numbers that were calculated for all the variables, independent and dependent variables. And now we will conclude with my colleague, Fernando. When it comes to a physical activity, it is always important to be overly cautious when looking at younger subjects and predicting their future moderate to vigorous physical activity. That being said, after fully going through the article about the enjoyment of physical activity, opinion will always change because the children who participated are not at the level of understanding the, pain, the main reason of the importance of physical activity. With that being said, the general findings in the article state the disagreements between the primary practices within physical education to create a physically healthy population. <clears throat> One main division between PE facilitators is that participants do not use a specific amount of energy during class. Without that energy, the students will not develop their knowledge and motivation for proper physical activity outside of the classroom. The subjects that were used were students in grade five and six, 
it's going to become a big problem because the children are still at a young age. And if they have no one on the outside of school that can help them with the lessons they learn, they will just give up and not care for it. Yes, there are a few questionable points, but there, there are also a few good points that make the study quite interesting in the point of view of the students. One of the major strengths of the study was a large geographic family, families across the country. There were 1,300 families that were and they gave many insights into the testing. Another big strength of the study was that it tested whether gaining minutes of moderate to vigorous physical activity within PE it is a mechanism through which experiences led to body mass index and physical activity to related outcomes of one year later in grade six. But also, one thing to make sure that is stated, the children in the fifth grade had an increase of minutes in their PE class a couple years earlier. Some other good points that were stated were that the teachers have goals for each individual student and that some research showed that the children with high mastery goals had the most adaptive with motivational responses to future physical activity. Even though this can be a key difference for the future, some downsides can be that if the students are always told to use high levels of energy, it may take away chances to develop physical literacy skills that will help them remain active in their futures. That can be a cost in many people becoming overweight after a certain age. This is a possibility, but it is very uncertain because the findings and the results show that the experiences of movements for children in PE classes are critical to future volitional physical activity participation. Even though the research was quite accurate, it can change in the future because the children still need to grow and become more mature and their minds might change when it comes to exercise. With that in mind, some instructors should prioritize physical literacy development over high energy usage. It will always be important to pri prioritize physical activity in class because facilitating positive experiences that lead to improvements in confidence, competence, and ultimately enjoyment. And if we head to our next slide, this is our reference. And that concludes our presentation. Thank you.